Good morning, Year 4. Welcome to your English lesson for Monday the 8th of February. We're going to start with a very quick game of Spot the Difference. So all you need to do is just take in my background and in a moment you need to spot what has changed. Three things are going to change, so look really carefully. Okay, what's changed? Can you spot it? So I swapped How to Hide a Lion with this book up here called The Storm Whale. I swapped Zog with That's Not My Chick. Can you see right up there? That's Not My Chick, that green book. And a cheeky little giraffe has come to join us on the bookcase. Okay. Right, we're going to carry on with our lessons. So let me share my screen for you. So today and tomorrow, year four, we're going to do um, two lessons on the Grand High Witch from the Witches so that we can start our brand new unit after half term. So today's date is Monday the 8th of February 2021 and we are learning to explore the appearance of the Grand High Witch. So the first thing you need to do, please, is pause the video and write the date and what. So before we start thinking about the Grand High Witch, we're just going to revisit our target for this term. Our target was expanded noun phrases. Now Emmett has had a go at describing the grandmother from the witches using some expanded noun phrases. And he thinks that he has used three expanded noun phrases in his description. Do you agree? Let me read it to you. The grandmother is a kind, thoughtful woman. Her intelligent, caring personality has rubbed off on her brave grandson. Born in Norway, she knows a lot about witches and aims to avoid these threatening evil creatures. I'd like you to pause the video, please. See if you can find the expanded noun phrases and just work out, has he used three? OK, let's have a look together now. Let me get my editing pen. So, the grandmother is a kind, thoughtful woman. There we are, we've got a noun here. The noun is woman, and we've got two adjectives in front of it. That's my expanded noun phrase. Her intelligent, caring personality. Personality is my noun, and it's described by the two adjectives, intelligent and caring. Um, oh, and right down the bottom here, we've got threatening evil creatures. Creatures is my noun. Threatening and evil are my adjective. Have I got them all? I haven't, have I? Can anyone spot the expanded noun phrase that I have not underlined? It's this one here, brave grandson. We don't have to have two adjectives. Sometimes we just have one adjective. It's her brave grandson. So Emmett hasn't used three expanded noun phrases, he's actually used four. Right, what we're going to do today, we are going to be exploring the appearance of the Grand High Witch. So to start off with, I will be reading you a couple of pages from the book which describe the appearance of the witch. I would like you please to take notes on uh, everything I say about her appearance but it only needs to be written in note format year four. So I've got an example for you here. Tiny dash, no more than 4.5 feet. Okay, so we're only writing in note format. So what you need to do um, in the middle of your page, I'd like you to write the Grand High Witch and then just draw a bubble around it like I have. Then as I read, you're just going to put um, use your ruler to draw a line off and you're going to write your note around your bubble. So if you need to pause the video as you do that, then, then just pause as I read. Uh, I'll get started now. Frizzled like a fritter, that's the chapter that we're reading. All the women, or rather witches, were now sitting motionless in their chairs and staring as though hypnotised by somebody who had suddenly appeared on the platform. There was another woman. The first thing I noticed about this woman was her size. She was tiny, probably no more than four and a half feet tall. That's my first note, look, tiny, no more than four and a half feet. 
She looked quite young. I guessed about 25 or six. I think under this box here, I have put uh, 25 years old. And she was very pretty. She had on a rather stylish long black dress that reached right to the ground and she wore black gloves that came up to her elbows. And like the others, she wasn't wearing a hat. Okay, you've got a few things you could write down there, haven't you? You've got 25 years old, pretty, long black dress, black gloves up to her elbows. Okay, pause the video if you need to and get down your descriptive notes, please. She didn't look to me like a witch at all, but she couldn't possibly not be one. Otherwise, what on earth was she doing up there on the platform? And why, for heaven's sake, were all the other witches gazing at her with such a mix of adoration, awe and fear? Very slowly, the young lady on the platform raised her hands to her face. I saw her gloved fingers unhooking something behind her ears. And then she caught hold of her cheeks and lifted her face clean away. The whole of her pretty face came off in her hands. It was a mask. As she took off the mask, she turned sideways and placed it carefully upon a small table nearby. And when she turned round again and faced us, I very nearly screamed out loud. That face of hers was the most frightful and frightening thing I have ever seen. Just looking at it gave me the shakes all over. It was so crumpled and wizened, so shrunken and shriveled, it looked as though it had been pickled in vinegar. It was a fearsome and ghastly sight. There was something terribly wrong with it, something foul and putrid and decayed. It seemed quite literally to be rotting away at the edges and in the middle of the face, around the mouth and cheeks, I could see the skin all cankered and worm-eaten, as though maggots were working away in there. There were times when something is so frightful you become mesmerised by it and can't look away. I was like that now. I was transfixed, I was numbed, I was magnetised by the sheer horror of that woman's features. But there was more to it than that. There was a look of serpents in those eyes of hers as they flashed around the audience. I knew immediately, of course, that this was none other than the Grand High Witch herself. I knew also why she had worn a mask. She could never have moved around in public, let alone booking at a hotel without, with her real face. Everyone who saw her would have run away screaming. The doors, shouted the Grand High Witch in a voice that filled the room and bounced around the walls. Are they chained and bolted? The doors are chained and bolted, your Grand Highness, answered a voice in the audience. The brilliant snake's eyes that were set so deep in that dreadful, rotting, worm-eaten face glared unblinkingly at the witches who sat facing her. You may remove your gloves, she shouted. Her voice, I noted, had that same hard metallic quality as the voice of the witch I had met under the conquer tree. Only it was far louder and much, much harsher. It rasped, it grated, it snarled, it scraped, it shrieked and it growled. Everyone in the room was peeling off gloves. I was watching the hands of those in the back row. I wanted very much to see what their fingers looked like and whether my grandmother had been right. Ah, yes, I could see several of them now. I could see the brown claws curving over the tops of their fingers. They were about two inches long, those claws, and sharp at the ends. You may remove your shoes, barked the Grand High Witch. I heard a sigh of relief going up from all the witches in the room as they kicked off their narrow high-heeled shoes. And then I got a glimpse under the chairs of several pairs of stocking feet, square and completely toeless. Revolting they were, although the toes had been sliced away from the feet with a carving knife. You may remove your vicks, snarled the Grand High Witch. She had a peculiar way of speaking. There was some sort of foreign accent there, something harsh and guttural, and she seemed to have trouble pronouncing the letter W. As well as that, she did something funny with the letter R. She would roll it round and round her mouth like a piece of hot pork crackling before spitting it out. Remove your vigs and get some fresh air onto your spotty scalps, she shouted. And another sigh of relief arose from the audience as all the hands went up to their heads and all the wigs with the hat still on them were lifted away. OK, lots and lots of description there uh, about the Grand High Witch. Hopefully you managed to write some notes. Let me just show you. 
what I put on my notes and you are very welcome to magpie what I have written if you have missed any. So I've got tiny, no more than 4.5 feet. I've got about 25 years old and then I actually went back with my editing pen and crossed it out when she removed her um, mask. Same for this one, pretty. I wrote pretty and then I crossed it out when she removed her mask. I've got a long black dress and gloves to the elbow, gloves to elbows. A frightful, frightening face. Face, dash, crumpled, wizened, shrunken and shriveled. Don't forget this is note format, so it's okay to put face, dash. Face, dash, like pickled in vinegar. Face, dash, foul, putrid, decayed, rotting at the edges. Her face is cankered, worm-eaten and has maggots. She has a naked spotty scalp. She's got toeless feet. Maybe I should have put that they were square toeless feet. She's got sharp brown claws and she's got deep set snake eyes. She is a really gruesome, horrible character, isn't she? I really, really wouldn't want to meet her. So now we have had a good look at the description of our Grand High Witch. Your challenge today, Year 4, is you have got to draw her. So you need to use all of that description to draw the very best picture you can. Okay, so that is your task, draw the Grand High Witch. Now you can use pencils, you can use felt tip pens, you can use paint, you can use pastels, you can collage, you can do anything you want as long as you represent accurately the appearance of our Grand High Witch. In fact, you can even use something like Play-Doh if you want to, and create a Play-Doh Witch and just take a photo for your books. It's entirely up to you how you choose to represent that witch, but I really do want it, you to put your time into it and I want it to be a really nice, accurate portrayal of her appearance. Those of you who want to go deeper today, you might like to add your own descriptive vocabulary around the drawing. So don't use Roald Dahl's words, use your own words to describe what the Grand High Witch looks like. So you might say her claws were thick and gnarled like, uh, oh, what's thick and gnarled, like old wood. Or you might say her scalp was as spotty as, oh, as spotty as, the skin of a strawberry. Her skin was as rough as the skin of an orange. Okay. Use your own vocabulary rather than um, roll dials. Okay, I really hope you enjoy this task. Put lots and lots of thought into your drawings and I really, really can't wait to see them. Enjoy your four.